So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at my first impression of the new Gutenberg editor for WordPress. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm simply going to go through the process of installing this and activating it. And I'm going to give you my first impression of using it as we go through the whole process. Now, I've never tried Gutenberg before. This is my complete and utter first impression of it. So let's just jump over to WordPress and take a look at what I think of Gutenberg. Hi, and welcome to WP Tuts. My name is Paul C, and this is the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon below to be notified every time we add new content. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the biggest update to the dashboard of WordPress since the customizer, and that's the forthcoming Gutenberg editor, a visual way of creating content in WordPress. So let's just open up the dashboard, install it, and take a first look at what Gutenberg brings to the latest version of WordPress. So now when we log in to the latest copy of WordPress, log into the dashboard, and you can see we've now got a new dashboard window which asks us, do we want to test out the new Gutenberg? So we can install Gutenberg or we can install the classic editor. So let's just take a look and see what Gutenberg is like. Now, this is the first time I've seen any of this. So you're gonna get my honest reactions to what I think of the process, the interface itself, and everything that goes with Gutenberg. So let's install it and let's take a look at what that gives us. To install, we just click on activate and that then should give us the Gutenberg editor so we can start testing things out. So here we go, here's the Gutenberg editor. So first thoughts, it looks a nice clean interface, looks like it's nicely well integrated into the design of your dashboard of WordPress. The first thing that I can kind of see though is that they've kind of bucked the trend to what you're finding with a lot of other visual editors and that's they popped all the controls on the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side. So while it's not a big deal, it is something that's a little interesting. So other than that, what else do we have? Well, it's nice to see they've kind of integrated the default editor into a more customizer style layout. So we've got things like the status and visibility we can go through there. It just looks a little less heavy. So that's kind of nice to see. And basically upon the fact that most of the things that they're doing with Gutenberg is all based around blocks. I mean, just making the assumption that once you select something, like for example, this image, we can see that the block options become available and we've got an inline context editor that allows us to do various different things. And obviously we can move things up and down, which, isn't necessarily the most intuitive way of doing things. I think drag and drop is much nicer, but okay, that's not the end of the world. You can still work with that. So what do we have in the document setup? So we've got all our normal things, our categories, our tags, and so on. So that's all pretty, pretty straightforward. Just a visual change more than anything. Nice, we've got the stick to front page and pending review option. So that's quite cool. And featured image, we can set that at this point and the excerpt and so on. So I do like the way this has been updated to make the page a little lighter, a little easier to work with. And it's also quite nice to see that the blocks option is fairly unobtrusive. We have the inline editing option so we can see we can easily transform headings and so on and the alignment and things like that. So that's quite nice. Okay. Um, I mean, there's, there's nothing that looks particularly complex and I can kind of see that Well, my first reaction was, oh my God, what are they going to do to WordPress? The integration is actually quite nice. Now, obviously, we're going to need to see what it'll play like alongside things like Brizzy Editor and Elementor and things like that. So hopefully that will be something that will sit alongside each other. And this just gives us a nicer option to work with over what we currently have, which is, really hasn't changed in, I can't even remember. I think I started using WordPress probably back around about version 2. And while it's been improved, it's never really been massively overhauled. So it's nice to see that they've streamlined that and just made it a little less unwieldy. So for new users, I think this is going to be something that's very, very useful and a nice way of working. So, okay, what do we have? Text settings, small, medium, and large. So, okay, that's pretty cool. We can easily just click on there and make some changes very easy. The reset option and custom sizes. So it is a lot more intuitive than working with the old sort of uh, editor. That is really nice. We can chuck in a drop caps if you want to. And our color settings. Actually, I was kind of dreading the whole process of dealing with Gutenberg. So it's actually quite nice to see that the implementation is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I've kind of put off even testing this out until now because I kind of thought I was going to absolutely hate it. But my first opinion is it's definitely an improvement over what we have 
in version 4.98, I think we're currently on, if you don't enable Gutenberg. So I suppose that's a pretty good thing, is that it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. In fact, I'm pleasantly surprised at my first opinion of this. And like I say, this is not my normal type of video. This is a first look for me. So I'm kind of on the same page as probably most of you are, where you've never actually seen this, never tested it out. So when you do get the option to enable it, I would say it's worth taking a look at, but obviously not on a, a live environment. You can, if I'm not mistaken, disable this and re-enable the default editor, so you should be able to go back. But I still think it's worth trying and taking a look at some of the things you can do with this. So it is quite nice. So let's take a look at adding a new block. So we'll drop in and we can choose any of the predefined blocks. So again, this is quite nice. We've got common block all options. So very similar to what you'd see in your normal page editor. So let's try adding something in. Let's try, let's just YouTube or something. So let's just do a little search for that and we'll just add a YouTube video in. So all we need to do is drop in our URL and that should then allow us to play the video back. Let's embed that. Okay, pretty straightforward, nice and easy. We see we've got the alignment options. If you want to make any changes in there, we can simply click on the edit URL so we can change that to any other URL we want. So all pretty straightforward and the move up, move down option, which I still don't really think is the nicest way of working. We've got this little sort of more options pop out on the right hand side and you can see we can hide the block settings or we can edit HTML, duplicate it, add to reusable blocks, which is a sort of template in structure. So we can pull those back up at any time. So if we apply styling and so on to those and we want to reuse them, we can do that. So that's quite a nice way of working. So that's pretty cool. We've also got these little options to add YouTube, add video or add image. So that's quite nice to see. We've got some more options down there and we've also got the new add block. So we can easily work with this without having to rely on going back into the top left hand corner to keep on adding blocks. So it has been pretty well thought out from my first impression. Like I say, the drag and drop option is still isn't the nicest way, especially when you're working with a page like this where there are a lot of elements. It can very easily become a little unwieldy. So I'd like to see something along the lines we have with Brizzy where we have the option to see each block in a visual representation and we can just drag and drop those that's quite a nice, easy way of working. Even to have the option like we do inside Elementor to be able to just drag and drop things or copy and paste things in there, that'd be quite nice to see. Speaking of things like that, I wonder, do we have copy and paste? Let's try a keyboard short. Let's try copy and let's just try paste. No, unfortunately that doesn't seem to do anything. So that would be nice to see if we can get that into a future version of Gutenberg. So I'd like to see that. We also have the Save as Draft Preview Publish options in the top corner. and We've got the little cog icon, which we can click to get rid of all the settings on the right hand side. And then we've got these little three editors, so we can see we can jump between the visual editor, the code editor, and some settings and so on. So that's quite nice. We can copy all the content. We can show our tool tips, fix toolbar at the top. So, okay, that's pretty easy to deal with. Let's pull that back up. Okay, so let's just jump back over the block section. Let's take a look at some of the other blocks that we have available. Let's give them a click, and what do we have in here? Nice that we've got the most common or the most used at the top. This is something I'd love to see in more of the page editors because it does speed up your development process where you are using generally graphics, text, video embeds, headings, maybe quotes and audio and things like that. So you do have that option in here, which I do think is something that really should be in all page editors because you start to add more and more blocks and more and more widgets and things in, it very quickly becomes quite complicated and quite time consuming just to find something that you want in there. Yes, you have the search, but it still kind of gets in the way of your, your design flow. Okay, what else do we have? We have widgets, so we can drop in short codes. That's quite nice to see. The archives options, let's take a look at that. Let's just say, let's try the latest posts and see what that does. Okay, so we only have one post on here. We do have options then to change from list view to grid view. Mm, it's pretty basic. And number of items and so on, display post date. What do we have under advanced? No, just CSS classes. So again, we can reference CSS classes if we're using something like we want to hand code with our theme or we're using something like CSS editor, like CSS hero, for example. You can apply those additional classes that you can style those independently of the actual page editor, which is always quite nice to have. We like to have the options to be able to custom code any CSS in there and tag into different elements so we can customize anything we want. So there's already 
I'll put a ton more things that I haven't looked at in here. Things like the galleries. Let's take a little look at those. So what do we have? Our gallery options. Okay, we can transform it to an image if we want to. We can drop in captions in there. It's okay. I can't say that I'd see myself using it right now. Do we have keyboard shortcuts like undo? We do, which is quite nice. So your control Z should still undo anything you do. We've got your undo and redo at the top. We've also got the information that gives us about how many words, paragraphs, blocks, and so on that we're using in there, which can be useful if you're working to a particular amount of content you want per page or you know something along those lines. So there's some nice little tweaks in here, nice little options. Overall, my first initial impression is it's better than I thought. I will be brutally honest about it. It is better than I thought, but I think it still has a long way to go to be something that could come anywhere close to replacing something even like the latest version of Brizzy, which is still fairly basic in the functions that it offers. There's still quite a few things that are lacking from there, but that still has a much nicer, easier way of working, a much more visual way of working. Drag and drop is considerably better in there. You also have all the keyboard shortcuts for control, copy and paste and things along those lines. If I'm wrong on this count and it does actually uh, work inside Gutenberg, please, by all means, let me know those keyboard shortcuts. It's a good start. Like I say, it's better than I thought it was going to be, but I'm still not convinced it's the way to move forward completely with WordPress. So that's Gutenberg, my first impression on this latest update for WordPress. Now, while we don't have to use it right now, there's not many versions left before this becomes the default editor for working in the WordPress dashboard. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think Gutenberg is the way forward for WordPress? Or should this visual page building exercise be left to the bigger players like Divi, Visual Composer and Elementor, etc.? Let me know in the comments section below. Have you tried this out? Do you think Gutenberg is good, bad? Are you indifferent to it? Let me know in the comments section and let's get a conversation started. Speaking of a conversation, did you enjoy this first impression format video? If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what future videos and content you'd like to see on the channel. I'd love to hear what you guys want. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.